Hi everyone, my name is Cynthia. Let's talk books. Today I am here with my list of my top romance novels of 2021. So these are in no particular order and these are not necessarily books that were released in 2021. It's just books that I read in 2021. I have, let's see, eight books that I want to talk to you about all romance novels in different kind of subgenres of romance. So the first book on my list is Take a Hint, Danny Brown by Tavia Hibbert. The Brown Sister Trilogy, is, it's a good one. I've enjoyed every single one of the installments. Um, Tavia Hibbert just has a really like fun, sparkly way of writing. The chemistry between the characters are delightful. And in fact, I think that Danny Brown's my favorite one of the sisters. She is working at a university, doing her work, and then uh, is developing a crush on one of the security guards when there is a drill, a fire drill, and that in comes the security guard to escort her out of the building, and they have this beautiful little romantic moment that gets caught and becomes a big deal on social media. Uh, there's fake dating and just the characters are just so mature, super cute. I just really, really enjoyed um, Take a Hint and Danny Brown, and I can't wait to read more from Tavia Hibbert. Um, I started delving into her um, her other books, and I just, I've been enjoying a lot of what, what she's been writing, and Take a Hint Danny Brown was definitely a standout in 2021 for me. So next on my list is The Killing Dance. This is book number six. Um, in the Anita Blake series by Laurel K. Hamilton. This is the book in which um, a lot of sexual tension is consummated. <laughs> I just, I really am enjoying Anita Blake. I'm enjoying seeing her evolution. Um, I'm enjoying all of the side characters. Um, and this is just, this was just a standout for me in the series. And it's rare that a book this far into a series really stands out. Uh, but this one just did it because it's book six in the series. I really can't say anything else, but uh, yeah, I just, I really enjoyed it. And it was definitely a highlight for me in 2021. Next book on my list is The Spanish Love Deception by Elena Armas. This is a book in which our main character um, has is going to a wedding, a family wedding um, in Spain. She doesn't have a date and everybody thinks she should have a date because the best man at the wedding is her ex who uh, she had a kind of some sort of weird breakup. We don't know everything that happened there. Um, and to her co-worker who she hates and who she thinks hates her and he's volunteering to be her date on this wedding to Spain um, and the, the beginning is a little bit sluggish because you don't get to Spain until further into the book but once we get to Spain uh, there was a lot of fun uh, a lot of laughter a lot of romantic moments there's only one bed <laughs> anyways I enjoyed it um, I read it with my siblings so that made it extra fun and kind of special for me uh, I know this book was really big on TikTok. Um, I kind of miss that that craze. My sister was the one su who su suggested we should read this book, and I had fun reading it with my siblings. Next book on my list is Morning Glory Milking Farm by C.M. Nascostas. Uh, Nascosta. I okay. This is not a five. This was not a five star read for me, but it was such a weird, interesting romance. Monster romances are really interesting sometimes because sometimes they do really cool interesting things this this was about a minotaur and uh, a milking fart where minotaurs are milked and our main female character starts her job there and uh, the hero is a minotaur client this story could have been super, super icky, 
Um, but I thought that the way it was written was really clever and really interesting. Uh, this was one of those books that was really big on TikTok uh, for a while and then on social media. And I can totally see why. When a book just does something interesting, something different, even within the monster romance genre, I thought this was really quite unique. Um, it really stands out and it doesn't have to be a perfect book to really capture a romance audience's attention it just has to do something unique and i thought that this book really really did it uh, it's obviously not going to be for everyone and i would not tell anyone to start the romance journey with a monster romance unless uh that really appeals to you uh but uh this was interesting. Yeah, oddly interesting and oddly sweet. I found it really, really sweet because I was not expecting that from the description I was hearing everybody, um, you know, give. But it turned out to be a really sweet, uh, really interesting book. The next book on my list is A Lot Like Adios by Alexis Daria. I've really been enjoying Alexis Daria's um writing um she's she's also somebody who's doing something really interesting where like her writing just also sparkles for me um added to it her books are all latinx romances they feature latinx characters and this one both characters are latinx um who uh are reconnecting this is like second chance romance and I'm not a big fan of second chance romances but this year I found a few that I really liked and a lot like the Adios was one of those um, in terms of the spice level you should know that Alexis Daria tends to write high heat romances so quite a bit of uh, sex scenes and this one starts like it's really heavy with that in, in the beginning of the book because this is a couple that has had a previous relationship and now they've been brought back together by work and they're trying to figure out what that means and how their families what role their families are going to play in these relationships because both of them um have family issues they're either really close to their family or really not close to the family and so family issues have to be worked out and i just found a lot of that really realistic and really meaningful um, and i really enjoyed it the next book on my list has got to be my favorite romance that i read in 2021 but also one of my favorite one of my top favorite books of the year and that is The Fastest Way to Fall by Denise Williams. I did a dedicated review to this uh, book and I will link that in the description box if you're interested in hearing me talk more about that. But one of the things I really enjoyed here is that Denise Williams took on the topic of body image and weight mm -hmm. and how that plays a big part of like popular culture and media and and the main character is a writer for an online magazine and she is tasked with writing a review of a fitness app she and one of her colleagues are doing reviews of these two uh, new fitness apps that are getting a lot of attention and Ter West, who is one of the part owners of the fitness app that our main character is reviewing. And so uh, there's a lot of that discussion. So if that is a trigger warning uh, for you, a trigger for you, uh, you might want to avoid that. But I thought that the topic was handled really, really well. Denise Williams is critiquing a lot of the way in which women's bodies are analyzed and are treated. And our main character has a very positive image of herself, but also deals with insecurity and um and it's also a book that kind of makes you want to exercise it was very odd <laughs> because i'm telling you this is all handled really really well um and uh, i just i really enjoyed it i also really liked the way the couple dealt with the central conflict in the relationship of this conflict of interest in their jobs and what they're doing um, it was resolved a little bit conveniently at the end but i still really really enjoyed it and denise williams is like She's only published two books and she's she's now an auto buy author for me because um, her two books that, that she has published have just been so, so excellent. She writes the kind of ro contemporary romance novels that I have fallen in love with that deal with important social issues that have strong female characters and soft, almost you know just soft men uh who really love i uh, love the female character so i really really enjoyed um the fastest way to fall next on my list is for the love of april french uh, by penny ames this is 
a book that engaged, whose main character is a transgender woman and uh, she is April French. She is well known within the BDSM community um, in the town she lives in in Texas. In comes the hero and he's brand new to town, brand new uh, to the BDSM community there. Um, he's had some issues in his previous relationship with the BDSM element and he's trying to get back into it. Um, April French is dealing with a lot of kind of insecurities because she's very like she's very comfortable in her own skin and who she is in her identity but other people are not and other people treat her in odd ways that she hasn't fully like engaged with or she hasn't fully resolved i mean and she's trying to resolve those and so you have two very flawed people coming together they're perfect for one another and despite all their imperfections and it, it's really, really sweet and really, really emotional story. And I love that in my romance novels. It's also an interracial, an interracial romance. And I just, there was so much to like here. And Penny Ames is an author that I'm going to keep an eye out to see what else uh, she comes out with. So uh, th this was just an excellent read for me. And then lastly... Uh, the last book on my list is Just for the Holidays by Adriana Herrera. So this is another second chance romance, which again are not is not my favorite trope. Uh, but in this one, you have two main characters that um, met in college, started dating, had a fantastic relationship, and in comes the influence of somebody to break them apart um, the hero then ends up becoming a movie star uh, he is an actor and our heroine is the head of like um, casting at her family's production agency and so the two are brought together by this new project that he would be perfect for that the creators of the show want him for and so they are brought together it they are snowed in with a little bit of fake relationship trope in there. Um, it also has a lot of Latinx flavor in here. Adriana Herrera is Dominican and the main characters are both um, Caribbean and so there's a lot of that uh, mixed into the story. In addition, it's it's a holiday romance so there's you know Noche Buena and Christmas mixed in here um, uh, to bring the couple together and and work on some of those issues um, it's not a, a some of the issues that they have right reconnecting yeah it's not a, a romance that is necessarily for everyone because uh, the main character uh, hasn't had a sexual relationship with anybody other than the hero and I think that that's gonna rub some people the wrong way I thought it totally fit the personality and just the character as Adriana Herrera wrote it um, and it was not an issue for me I thought it was such a sweet and just it surprised me with how good it was especially with the trope that is not not one of my favorites uh, and so I was just so pleasantly surprised by, by the romance and and the holiday aspect of it also totally sucked me in. <laughs> so, so that is it. Those are the my top eight romances of 2021. I'm gonna keep reading. I have a long list of romances in my physical TBR, um, and my digital TBR is huge on romances right now. So, um, 2022 will probably be a big romance year for me. So follow along if you're interested, and let me know what your top romance read of 2021 was because there's nothing I love more than adding to both my physical and digital TBR. <laughs> so thank you so much for watching this video and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!